All right, today we're gonna to replace the bearings in the on one of the hubs on my boat trailer. This is a Trailex uh, SUT 200 AI trailer. I can't look, I can't seem to find the data for the uh, bearing and racer size. So we're gonna pull off the hub and see if we can find out what kind of bearings this trailer takes. All right, uh, first things first, we got this trailer lifted up. It's a really light trailer, it's all aluminum. I just have it hoisted up and mounted for a little uh, anchor point on the ceiling here. We got a bearing buddy on the end, full of grease. This is a messy job, so have lots of paper towels and rags ready. I'm just gonna tap it gently with a hammer, see if we can get this bearing buddy to come off. Okay, removing the bearing buddy happens pretty quick. Just work it back and forth. After this, we're gonna remove the cotter pin from the spindle and then uh, remove the castle nut. There we go. All right, once you get this castle nut off, the entire hub assembly will, you can remove it. All right, so after I got the castle nut off, I had a hard time removing this hub from the spindle. Uh, the rear bearing had become corroded and actually was stuck on the spindle. I, I really had a rough time removing it, as you can see right here. I had to take a hammer and smack the back of the hub a few times. And eventually the hub gave free, but the bearing remained. So then I had to take a center punch and just slowly tap that bearing off of the spindle. And there you can see I finally got it removed. Okay, so here's all the parts to the hub um, in the order that we removed them. This is the uh, bearing buddy that I took off first, the cotter pin, the castle nut. Here's the hub itself. Here's the first bearing. This one's still in pretty good condition. Um, I'll still replace it because they're cheap. I mean, it's about $12 for a new bearing and racer set. And then here's the rear bearing, which kind of fell apart after I smacked it with a hammer. Obviously all the bearings are missing, but this is the inside uh, component to the bearing. And you notice it's marred up pretty good. It's got a lot of, uh, you can see a lot of chewed up marks inside the, the ring there. So this one was making a grinding sound and not rolling smooth at all. So it was time to replace this one. And then on the back of this, you have a dust cap. Now earlier I pointed out the racer, which is this metal ring right here, this part, and it's at an angle, and the bearing fits right in there like that. It is designed to mate up with that racer perfectly. They come in a paired set, so if I replace one, I'll replace the other. There's also one on the back side, and it fits in there like that as well. So we'll put a new bearing here, and we'll put a new bearing on the front. We'll repack these bearings before we put them in, but now we have to measure these to find out what kind of bearings they're they are. I don't see any markings on them to tell me what size it is. There's nothing uh, quite legible that I can read. So we're gonna have to do some measurements to find out what kind of bearing this really is. All right, we get out our trusty calipers. We got them set in inches. I'm gonna zero this out right here. And let's, let's measure the uh, bearing to see what we get. So we're gonna measure the inside diameter of this bearing. It's showing 9.9, .9. I'm gonna call that one inch. It's like one inch bearings. Measure the back side just in case. Yep, still showing one inch. So that looks like a one inch bearing. That is the front bearing. We also wanna measure the back because sometimes they're not always the same. But it looks like these ones are universal. Yeah, one inch on that one, so that looks good. And then we'll measure the inside uh, or the outside diameter of the racer on the in, in the hub here. I'm showing 1.9. Okay, so I ran over to Wally World, was able to pick up a set of wheel bearings for one hub. Let's open this up and see how how these. How these compare. All right, so here's the racer bearing. They all seem to match up pretty good. Just look about right. That racer looks pretty good. Also a little bit worried about this cap. We want to make sure these are the same size. Let's see. Yeah, that looks, uh, that looks Pretty good.
Okay, I got the hub mounted in a vise. Now we're gonna take out what's called the racer. It's this metal ring, it's made of hardened steel. Now it has a little bit of a lip on it. You can tell right here, this side is tapered, okay? And if you look at the hub, it might be difficult to see, but right here is the racer sitting inside the hub. It sits just like this. So well, that means there's a lip on the back side. Now there's a racer on both sides of this hub. One on this side, one on the bottom, and the other one on the bottom is facing down like this. We're gonna take this, uh, this punch and we're gonna rest it right along this lip and we're gonna tap it with a hammer, working evenly all the way around this circle to get this to come out symmetrically. You don't wanna to tap too hard on one side or it's gonna jam and get canted sideways like that. And we don't want that to happen. So now I'm gonna head, go ahead and remove that, that racer out of the hub. There it is, that just popped right out, that was easy. All right, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the other side. All right, there it is, L44610, so we got the same one. And this one looks, yeah, this is, you can, if I run my finger on the inside, you can see how chewed up the inside of this racer is. This is the one that was making awful noise. So yeah, this one definitely needed to be replaced. This bearing, something about this, this setup I don't like is most hubs, I'll show you on the back. Most hubs have a grease zerk somewhere, so you can pump grease into this hub, and the rear bearing will get fed more grease as it wears out over time. But this one did not. That's why I used the bearing buddy on the front of this hub, so you can put grease into it. But unfortunately, I didn't use enough grease, and that rear bearing got wet, dried out, ran out of grease, and then needs to be replaced. So that's how it happens. Okay, for the next step, we're gonna put the new racer in. Make sure you put the uh, this, this flat surface down with the uh, beveled side facing up. You never wanna put it in reverse. That is a pain to get out. So you can see the lip right here inside the hub. This portion of the racer is gonna rest against that. So we wanna put it in just like that. We want it to go in uniform so we want to be careful not to get it sideways like this or else otherwise it'll jam inside the hub. So take a block of wood and a hammer and give it some solid taps in the middle. There we go. You can see it started to go down. Now I happen to have another block of wood from a separate project that is just the right diameter to go on top of this and push this the rest of the way in. We're going to use this to hammer the racer in the rest of the way. All right, that's looking pretty good. A couple more hits for good measure. Another technique I saw, there's lots online you can look up, but they grind this part the old racer down, the one that you're gonna throw away, and then they use that to drive in the, the, uh, the new racer. And always check to make sure it's seated properly, which this one is. That looks good. All right, we'll do the other side. want to point out that after you've done this you want to make sure you go back and make sure there's no imperfections on the racer and you clean out all the debris you can see little specks of sawdust from the block I used I went back and wiped those out with a rag and used some compressed air to blow it out now we got to pack the bearings 
and put the new ones in. They'll fit just like that. Cool. Okay, now we're gonna pack the bearings with grease. Uh, if you've never done this before, it is an incredibly messy job, so don't be shy, wear gloves. First thing we're gonna do is get some grease. This is what I chose. Don't be shy with it. If you want a big glob of grease out of the tube, put it in the palm of your hand, and then we're just gonna work this bearing until you start seeing the grease force its way out of the top. There you go. See that grease right there? It's starting to come right out of the top of the lip. You wanna do that all the way around with this bearing. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of this extra grease and I'm just gonna put it on the racer like this. And then we're gonna drop the bearing in there like that. There you go. Okay, when I was finished with the bearing, I took the rear seal and placed it on the back of the hub. Uh, make sure you got the flat side facing out and then took a block of wood, hammered it down, and now it sat flush with the hub. After this, I took it over to the spindle. And you'll see in this next video that I try to slide it down the spindle, but it won't go. It actually gets stuck and I had to remove it and the uh, bearing got stuck on the spindle again. Okay, so it looks like I found out what the problem is. You can see right here that the front part of the spindle is pretty clean, and then the back part has some corrosion or just buildup over time. And this is a tight machined fit for this bearing, one inch exactly. And uh, it does not want to go past any of this crap. So what I'm going to do is clean it up with a wire brush and maybe some sandpaper to see if that allows me to get it uh, to slide all the way to the back nice and smooth. All right, here we go. I'm gonna try using an orbital sander. We'll see if this does the job. All right, after sanding the spindle and getting rid of all that uh, gunk that was on there, you can see the corrosion, little pits of, of corrosion that have happened in the steel. And that's just because this trailer's about uh, 12 years old. Now that I got this off of here though, that fits like it should. So I think we solved our problem. Okay, we're gonna try this one more time. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna put in the other bearing. A Little bit of grease in there. That should slide right on. Just like that. All right, after placing the last bearing in, you can put the castle nut back on. Tighten the hub down, but don't tighten it too much that the hub will not spin. You want to back it off just slightly, and then you can put the cotter pin in place. Bearing buddy gets the same treatment with the block of wood. And we're done. Now we just have to fill it with grease. Fill it with grease, you need a grease gun. Obviously you load it with the grease you want to use. Fit it on the zerk on the end. We're just gonna start filling this thing with grease. Let that sit for a bit. There you go, I hope that helps.